Thanks to Amaze for sponsoring today's video. We'll hear from them in a minute. Hey guys, Kim Java here. So if you ever want to know more about the health of your battery in your Tesla, then today's video is for you. So hidden in the software tab, you can now enter a service code that gives you all kinds of insight into your high voltage battery, your low voltage battery, and all kinds of interesting stats. But before we get going, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and you've hit that like button and let's do this. So the other day I did the unthinkable with my Model X. It was a total rookie mistake, but you know, somehow even I still let that happen. But you know what, I'm human and sometimes crap just happens. So I made a four hour day trip to see my family and I got back home late that evening and I was exhausted. I had my cranky toddler who is taking along. So I was pretty distracted when I got home. So before leaving on the trip, I dragged my charge rate up to 100% so I could make it to my destination and back on one charge. I made it there fine and I made it back no problem and plugged it back in when I got home. But guess what I also did? I forgot to adjust the charge setting when I got home. So early the next morning, my husband noticed my Model X had been sitting at 100%, forget this, 10 hours. So I am just cringing when I go and think about this. Um, he drove it around the highway for about 30 minutes to bring down my battery percentage back to at least 90%. And he also left me a nice little text message to wake up to. I'm sure you can imagine what that said. And while I'm super grateful to him, um, it also had me wondering just how bad is it to leave my Tesla sitting at 100%. I can't imagine that I am the only one that has done this out there. Okay. Before we dive in too far and show you just how severely my battery was actually impacted, I do want to thank Omaze for partnering with me to make videos like this one possible. So here's your chance to win a Plaid Model S Apex while supporting a great cause, the Peterson Automotive Museum. So this is one of the most unique Teslas you'll ever see and their best Tesla to date as it's been custom made by the team at Unplug Performance. It's also the quickest production sedan ever made with a zero to 60 under two seconds, over 1000 horsepower and nearly 400 miles of range. But what sets it apart are the custom features added by Unplugged. Things like a satin gray exterior, a Serrano red vegan leather bamboo interior by Franz von Holhausen, a carbon fiber wide body kit with accents making this truly a one of a kind Tesla. You won't find another one like it. So for your chance to win a custom plaid Model S Apex while supporting the great work by the Peterson Automotive Museum, a nonprofit that explores the history of the automobile, click the link in the description below or visit omaze.com slash Kim Java. The experience closes on January 27th and taxes and shipping are included for US winners. Let's get back to it. All right, so most of you guys know now that Tesla's batteries are primarily lithium ion based. And just like your smartphone batteries, they degrade faster if you charge them to 100%. And it's not just about battery degradation. Elon has gone on to explain that regen braking also doesn't kick in at a full charge, meaning the car is actually less energy efficient in general at higher state of charge. There are reports that regen braking can actually extend your Tesla's range by as much as 30% in the most extreme cases. So charging your battery to 95% might actually be almost as good range wise as charging to 100% and is also considerably better for your battery. But believe it or not, it's not necessarily bad to charge to 100% as long as you don't let it sit at 100% for more than a few hours. So. I remember a few years back, you guys might remember this, um, we had our nearly new Model 3 and it was only getting 70% of its rated range. So we had a Tesla engineer tell us that they actually recommend everyone charge to 100% at least once every three months to calibrate and maintain the health of your battery pack. So charging to 100 right before a trip or a full charge at a supercharger is totally fine because you'll be driving within minutes of topping it off. However, I left my car at 100% for something like 10 hours and that's gotta be terrible, right? Well, according to Tesla's lead battery researcher, Jeff Don, there's actually two main factors that speed up the inevitable degradation of your battery pack. One, it's high temperatures, and two, it's the increased time spent at high voltage, i.e. high charge levels. So it's the combination of 100% state of charge, aka high cell voltage, in addition to high temperatures that can cause much faster degradation than either of the two factors by themselves. 
and Dawn's research has verified that even though lower temperatures will sap your range, they dramatically slow the chemical reaction in your battery pack, which prolongs your battery life. I have cells from 1999 that were stored at about 20% state of charge, put them on in 2013, like new. We also know that most auto manufacturers, Tesla included, do have a built-in buffer at both the top end and the bottom end, so 100% and 0% might not actually be a completely charged or discharged battery. So for example, the long range Model Y has an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, but you and I only have usable access to 75 kilowatt hours of that pack. So yes, charging to 100% daily is probably too high a stress and voltage on your battery pack, but it's probably not as bad as it could be if Tesla actually let you take the voltage to its highest possible spot. A so-called true 100% of your battery pack, which we know that we just don't have access to right now. Okay, so my Model X brand new is rated for 348 miles. However, even the very first time that I charged it to 100, I only got 332 miles with a 100% full battery. And ironically, after my mishap, I had another road trip planned. So this time when I charged it to 100%, I actually only got 228 miles on a 100% full battery. So did I actually lose all of this range or is it just kind of based on my driving habits? You can actually check your battery health by going into software and then you're gonna hold on model for about three seconds and lift it and enter service. And then you're gonna get some warnings here, you know, don't do it on public roads, only change the settings if you know what you're doing, but you know, it's okay to look as long as you don't touch. So here we go, let's enable it. And this is really cool. Now we're in this service mode. You can see the infotainment hardware, autopilot hardware. There's a lot of really cool stuff in here. And at some point I'll do a complete video on all of this, but let's go into battery and you can see we have high voltage, low voltage. If we go into high voltage here, you can actually see that the battery health is 100%. Really cool, I can see that my battery is still healthy, 100% healthy, um, even with everything that I did to it. In fact, Tesla's impact report in 2021 showed that most of Tesla's cars in its fleet only had about 10% of degradation after 200,000 miles of driving. The data did suggest that on the average, a Tesla will lose about 2.9% of its rated range for every 10,000 miles driven. This is true for at least the first 20,000 or so miles. So basically, you can expect about 6% degradation to happen in the first couple years of ownership and the remaining 4% would, in theory, happen over the rest of the ownership period. In our 2018 Model 3, we have about 70,000 miles and show a full charge around 270 miles today. The car was rated for 310 miles when it was new, so that's about a 13% degradation. But also, every one of you guys watching will have varying degrees of degradation that probably falls somewhere between 10 to 20 percent and that really depends on the number of factors that we talked about like the environmental conditions storage of your tesla and the climate that you operate your tesla in also if you're supercharging frequently or going through lots of charge cycles frequently you'll be on the higher end of that degradation so to answer my original question how bad is it to leave your car at 100 for 10 hours did it actually damage the battery the answer is yes but the effect is slight and cumulative. So there really isn't a definite answer here like sitting at 100% for 10 hours will damage the battery, but sitting at 100% for five hours will not. So both batteries will have some degradation, but that battery that was at 100% for only five hours will have less degradation, and a battery that has never been to 100% will be in an even better shape. Okay, but with all this said, the effect is slight. So it's unlikely that you would even be able to tell which battery was actually impacted more. So the effect is cumulative. So if you charge your car and leave it at 100% overnight, 
for every night for a year, then you probably have a noticeable degradation compared to a car that hasn't been charged to 100%. So I think you guys are starting to get this now um, when you think of it like that. So after all of my research into everything and just how bad it is and messed up my car, it didn't seem like it was really that bad at all, provided that I don't make this mistake frequently, which I hopefully don't plan to, but again, I'm human. And obviously the battery health in that service mode I showed you still shows 100%, so I'm thinking I should be fine. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed and learned something new in this video. Please drop a like on the video as it will tell me and YouTube that you enjoy videos like this and I'll keep on making videos for you guys. So be sure you're subscribed and I'll catch you next time.